Hi, and welcome to my A to Z May fitness challenge. What I've done this month is on the first day of the month, I've started with an exercise that begins with the letter A, and then it just continues that way until we get to Z. And then the last few days, it says choose an exercise from week one, then choose an exercise from week two. So then you can pick whichever exercise of that week um, to do that day. So today I'm just going to show you a couple of reps of each exercise. You're going to do them for one minute every day, and you can put the whole week together for a, um, a more let's say, um, challenging workout at the end of the week, if you want. Okay, so the first exercise, letter A, we've got alternating leg lifts rolling up. So we're gonna be on the floor and you're just rolling up, lifting one leg at a time. You just alternate through. Now, if you have trouble and you can't get up all the way, you can simply just modify like this. So one more time, we're just alternating that leg roll up. Okay, for B, we get right into burpees. Now I'm going to modify the burpee for you as well. So the kind of burpee that we're doing is just more of a squat for us. We're coming down, we're pushing our legs out into a plank, we're jumping in and up. Now to modify, you can come down, you can step out, in and up. Another thing you can do is you can just come down and lunge back if that's something that works for you. And if going down on the floor doesn't work for you at all, what I always tell my clients to do is give me a jumping jack and a lunge, and then a jumping jack and a lunge. And finally, if that doesn't work for you, you tap out and you squat. So those are all the, so again, the burpee, down, out, in, up. So you just do those for a minute. C, we've got curtsy lunges. So you're going to cross the leg back in the lunge, step forward again, and cross back and just continue alternating sides. My back heel is up, my front heel is down. Next, we've got donkey, ki donkey kicks, kneeling donkey kicks, not to be confused with the crazy ones that I do in uh, my cardio classes. We come down and I like to come on my elbows and forearms and we just press up to the ceiling. So I would prefer that you do one minute on each side. So you do one minute on that side, one minute on this side, but if, if you're a beginner exerciser and you want to alternate, you certainly can for one minute. But I say do one minute on each side. Why not? Elevated bridges. So let me just demonstrate what I mean. So a typical bridge would be with your feet down and just lifting up and down. So you can certainly do that, but you can also put your feet on something to elevate your legs. So I'm just grabbing my ball. Lifting up and down. You can put your feet on a chair, a couch, anything sturdy. So this is just the elevated bridge. We're gonna keep our palms up to keep our chest open. And we're just lifting up and down right there, as high as you feel that you comfortably can, okay? That's the elevated bridge. Um, F, our flutter kicks. So we're gonna lie down. And here's a flutter kick and then I'll modify. So you just go as low as you feel you can Maintaining support in your back. Does that mean your back has to be glued to the floor? No. Does that mean it needs to be supported and not hurting or feeling strained? Yes. So my back is pretty much on the ground. It's fully on the ground. But if that doesn't work for you and you feel no strain, great, you can do this. Another way you can do it is you can do it a little higher up here. Okay. Another thing you can do is alternate leg, lip, leg drops. So you just alternate this instead. Another option is you can always put your head up and do it. Some people find that they're actually able to do it more easily with their head up. So that's up to you. So those are flutter kicks. And we're going to stand back up for a goblet squat. So goblet squats, typically when I train clients, I have them hold a weight at their chest. And then we keep our feet shoulder width apart. And we squat down and we come up. Now watch my knees. You do not go below 90. So there's me right here. Turning to the side. I'm not dropping down here. Please do not do that. That is not, that is not necessary. <laughs> All the squatting you see going that low is absolutely not necessary and will eventually deteriorate um, and cause issues around the knees. So please don't. Go to 90. Now, if you, so I mentioned a weight. Just hold your hands here. If you want to grab a weight, go ahead. So take those, don't speed through them. Take them nice and slow. Hold for a moment and push through the heels back up. Then the next day H are high knees. So high knees are meant to be done like this, bringing your knees up at a nice rapid pace like this. 
Okay, I keep my hands there just to make sure that I'm really getting those knees up. Now, if you're not someone who can jump, you're just gonna do a nice march. See, this is a rapid march. I've got one foot always on the floor. I'm not jumping. You can also do it slower, just like this. And when I do that, I like to make more of an arm movement just to increase the cardio. So that's H. So we've got inchworms at I. So inchworms, we start at one end of our mat. We walk out to a plank position, and then we walk back. You tap your toes, you stand up, and you go down. Now, if standing up in that part causes you to become dizzy, just go to here where you tap your toes and not back up. If you're not able to crawl out and do the inchworm, I would just ask you to hold a plank. <clears throat> jump squats. So Jay, jump squats, exactly what it is. You jump, kind of exploding that motion out of the heels. Now I wanna point something out. I've seen a few people do this horrible jarring thing where they jump up and they stop here. Oh God, I can't even, I don't know how people do that. It's so uncomfortable. And then come down. Please make it a fluid motion. And let me just remind you that if you can't jump or you're not supposed to be jumping, you're just gonna squat at a nice quick pace, okay? Then we've got K, which are, I call them kickers just for the K. They're butt kicks, right? So we put our hands back here. And now, just like the high knees, we're gonna try and hit our heels to our hands instead of our knees to our hands. So I'm coming up right here. Now you don't have to, you can always move your arms like this. You know, I like to tap my heels so I know I'm really getting those feet up. Lunges, L, very basic. I always prefer the reverse lunge. It's, it's a little bit better on the knees. I see better form than when people are stepping forward in the lunge, but it's up to you. So I'm gonna do the reverse lunge. Stepping back, now from the side, I'm just keeping my back heel up. Again, my front knee does not go below 90 degrees, okay? So that's up to you. You can step forward if you prefer. You can also make them walking if you want across the room. Mountain climbers, and so we're here, and we're drawing the knee up to the chest, setting that foot down, drawing the other knee up. So at a nice rapid pace, make sure that your shoulders are over your wrists. Now, if you need to modify, one option is to put your hands on an elevated surface, such as a step or a chair or a couch. If you're not able to put your weight on your hands like that, maybe you've got carpal tunnel, what I suggest you do is either going back to the high knees if you, are, if you can jump, and if not, you're just going to come up here and do one of these sort of knee to elbows at a nice quick pace, okay? Abs are still getting worked, pulling them in nice and tight. And was tough. There was really nothing with an end. So I just said, no excuses, hold a plank. So that's my thing, my motto, no excuses, and my signature exercise, the plank. So again, coming down, this is a forearm plank. If you try, people always ask me, does it matter which one I do? Yes, to me it does. This works your core a little bit more than this. This is in your shoulders more. This is in your core more. So to modify the plank, you drop to your knees and you hold right here, okay? Otherwise, you're here. Okay, oblique plank dips. dips. Again, I take a few liberties here to make it work for me. Side plank dips. Dips. I can't, I'm saying dills. I don't know what I'm saying. Dips. Dips, dips, dips. Oblique plank dips. So side plank dips. So you're going to go up and down, woo, right here. And I'm... I've got my shoulder and my elbow aligned and I'm lifting and lowering right here. Now I can modify this on a knee and lift up and down. If you cannot put weight on your shoulder like this, you will just repeat what we do at V, the V ups, which are here, we'll get to that soon. But that's what you can do instead. P, push-ups, of course, why not? So I've already stuck in the plank, so we get to do push-ups on P. So, should you keep your feet together or apart was a question I had very recently. Let me just say this. Technically, your feet are supposed to be together, your hands wide, you know, a little wider than your shoulders. That is a push-up position. If you go into the military, that is what that is a push-up. If you you're not going to the military, if you get more support, which you will, by separating your feet and you're able to do you know work a better push-up that way, start there. Then work on closing your feet, but it is supposed to be feet closed. So you're pushing up or you're gonna to go to your knees, 
and you're going to do a push up here. You can also go to the wall and do a push up against the wall. That works fine or on an elevated surface. Uh, quick feet and touchdowns for Q. Okay, quick feet is just just means exactly what it is. Your feet are going real quick. So then I'm adding a touchdown. So I'm going one, two, three, touchdown. One, two, three, touchdown. Because this is just not fun to do for a minute to me. So I'm just adding that touchdown in and going there, okay? So that's quick feet and touchdowns. Reverse crunches, you're on your back, your feet are in the air hands behind the head and you're just lifting your tush off the mat by pulling your belly in now you can certainly leave your head down you do not have to leave your head up this the point is to lift the bottom half of your body up but I always prefer for me just to keep my head up okay next I believe we have yes yeah, sumo squats Okay, sometimes you might hear me call them plie squats, sumo squats, it's basically the same thing. Heels in, toes out, you're squatting down. Your hands can be anywhere. Again, I like to just keep them at my chest right here. You can keep your arms up if you want. It doesn't matter. The idea is that you're going nice and wide, knees going over the toes right here. Make sure that you're not sitting so far back. You're sitting a little bit back. You don't want to sit forward either. Okay, so it's like just right just sitting straight down think of yourself nice and straight next we've got tricep dips yay so i'm gonna just do them right on the floor however you know you can do these on a chair we do these almost every month we do them all the time in my fitness challenges because it's a very simple arm exercise so i'm gonna lift my hips up and pull my belly in and i'm only going to bend and straighten my elbows nothing else is happening just bending and straightening the elbows you can absolutely do this off of a chair or a couch, something more comfortable um, than that. Fingertips are forward. Up, up, down, down, planks. Okay. So, again, I needed to use the U. Um, <clears throat> so, I kind of just spelled it out for you. Up, up, down, down, planks. They have many other names, but we're going to call them up, up, down, down, planks. So, you come down into a plank, and then you push up, up, down, down. So, I go from elbows to hands hands to elbows sure you can do this on your knees absolutely yes and then those v v ups that i mentioned before so if this is the modification for the side planks if you can't put your body weight on your shoulder but we want to really get them up so sometimes we do side leg lifts but i, I really want you to think this is side v ups you want to make that v see that v with your body so we're really lifting those legs up so don't I'm not doing these today. I'm doing these nice lifts. Now, what can you do to modify single leg? You know, single leg V right here. So you can either do these or these, and you're going to find one side is just more comfortable, easier than the other. It's always like that. W is a wall sit. So you're going to park your body against the wall. I'm going to go by my brick wall here and I'm going to sink down into a squat and where are my knees 90 degrees never below 90 degrees my feet are forward look at your toes a lot of times i mean you're sitting here for a minute so a lot of times people's toes will go out that's going to cause problems for your ankles and your knees so sit nice and tall pull the belly in back is pressed against the wall by 30 seconds you're going to be wondering when the hell will this ever be over and by a minute you won't be able to stand back up now you will it's great so that's the wall sit you can do that against any wall do, 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 do. X abs. Okay, this is tough too. X. Try and find something with X. So crisscross abs. <laughs> well, this is what I'm calling it. So all you're doing, it's it's similar to the flutter kick. You're crisscrossing your legs. How low should your legs be? That depends on you. If you're comfortable going low, go low. What I say before, make sure your back is not straight. Can you put your head up? Yes. And in fact, this is more comfortable for me. I feel much better when my head is up. I can go lower. If you're coming up like this, that's fine too, and make it work for you. It's not uncommon, let me just make a note, to feel stress in your hip flexors when you're doing these sorts of exercises. It is incredibly important to stretch those hip flexors. Here's a quick one. Do, do, do. So, butterfly stretch. Y raises, otherwise known as Superman's. So, you're going to lie on your belly. Arms are out to the side so now you're the letter y 
and you're lifting up and down. Should you lift your feet? That's up to you. If you can lift your feet, go for it. Up and down. Up and down. One more. Up and down. And for Z, I put Zumba. And I just put Zumba because it begins with a Z. But my point is I want you to put on a song that gets you in the mood to dance and just move your body. So shut, you know, turn off the lights if you want, shut the door, do anything you need to, and just dance. So on that last day of the alphabet, May 26th, you are gonna dance it out. It's a Tuesday, a random day to dance, but I thought, let's just have fun. So that's up to you. And then the following one, two, three, four, five days, that per is perfect, you pick an exercise from each week. So the first week, it's slim pickets. It's alternating legs or burpees. And then each week after that, you pick an exercise that you want to do from that week. Like I said, you can build a larger workout by by putting the whole week together if you want. And I tr there is a lot of alternating cardio and, and strength, so it kind of works well. That is the May 2020 Fitness Challenge, my A to Z challenge. Try to make it a little more interesting this month for you in going in a new direction. Please comment below if you have any questions. You can go find me at fusionfitnesstraining.com or you can always search for me, Jana Heath. Not a problem, it'll take you there. Um, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram for lots of daily tips. I'm live every morning right now on Facebook um, at 7.30 a.m. and I've got some classes on Zoom. Find me there, I'll see you soon.